Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time it is the Frozen Warframe from Thermorite, a 240mm AIO with a display. Okay, and even the box is shiny. This is one of their newer AIOs, and this one has got a built in screen. So let's actually open this up and actually what we'll do first of all is it does support AM5 as well as LJ1700. Have a look at the back now and look at some of the specifications but there as you can see tells you all the support to talk it also tells you the fan bearings it tells you the RPM even tells you the pump speed as well which is by here pump speed the pump is a four pin PWM and let's take a look at it shall we let's have a look. Now this has just come so you guys will see it when i've just seen it of course it's going to come with all this mounting brackets everything even ooh, a type c i'm assuming that's a usb 2 so that's for the screen so it runs through usb 2 then and of course comes with all the bracketry, the standoffs, the all the things you'd need for AMD and AM5, as well as uh, uh, in, Intel and AMD, sorry. Okay, so let's get the look, first look at this, shall we? AIO. Now, I do like their white coolers as well as the AIOs but look at that that looks gorgeous that looks amazing I love the little fan the little screen that's cool I like the housing in this big huge base plate that obviously I like that the fact the pump is four pin PWM now so that's where the USB-C goes to then of course then it's got these fans which are one of their newer fans and it's pre-installed comes with these little cable ties for the AIO so what I'm going to do now is get this into the system and do some actual testing okay so this is the Warframe 240mm AIO from Thermorite this is the fans at 50% Can barely hear it this is at 100% fan speed yes you can definitely hear it now okay then so this is the actual warframe display now it is 2.4 inches it's an LCD display it does allow to have some sort of flexibility when it comes to the overall monitoring as you can see you can do the ta uh, the date the time the year the day uh, you can do cpu temp gpu temp now on the actual software what i'll do is i'll put a overlay here so you guys can actually see what it looks like it's got 10 different themes but five are only animated this is actually number six the animations and it's that fast just one click that's me clicking in real time and as you can see from the animations it does look rather striking but because it's such a small screen the overall resolution as well as the overall sharpness is going to look better in a screen that's this tiny now they've got these are the overall default animations you can actually go in and do your own you can actually change basically everything you can change it for from 24 hours to 12 hours, you can change it to the date, the time. The, the, you can put day, month, and year instead, or just day and month. You can adjust the overall color. You can do absolutely anything. You can do decorative, uh, decorative layers with higher resolution pictures. And then, of course, then you can also do a background. You can put your own image, uh, GIF. Then there's a screen projection, which will actually project the overall desktop on your on the computer and it will just show it watch easy see as you can see microsoft edge and which is right there and as you can see i don't you can actually see that see me clicking there we go it actually does it which is rather cool 
Now, what I'm going to do is actually adjust this. Let's have a look, is it? Will this actually change? Oh, wait, let me have a look. 100, let's just have a look. Oh, it does. Okay, so, as you can see, it actually changes over and you can actually see MSI Center. Now, that is actually a cool feature and the overall software is really easy to use. There's no big problems with it. It's instantly and as you can see, the overall animations is instant. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll put an overlay during I'm talking so I can show you the overall different themes and stuff like that so you guys can get a, a rough idea. But this is so easy to download. It's unbelievable. All you've got to do is just put in the actual product name, Frozen Warframe, into Google and it'll come up just below the overall website and it will say which models this software is actually compatible with. And also, this is cool too. It's removable. All it is is held by magnets and of course it's got a Type-C and then it goes down to a USB 2 port. Right then, so when it comes to the thermals, I've done two different tests and obviously I've done my normal uh, run of benchmarks, Cinebench, Blender, as well as 3D Mark CPU test. Now, when it comes to the out-the-box settings, when it comes to that, the 5900X, I will say that obviously it does draw about 141 watts and when it comes to Cinebench R23, the idles with 28 Celsius with a max of 60. Blender Classroom, the idle to 28 Celsius with a max of 59. Blender Pavilion, the idle to 28 Celsius with a max of 58. And 3D Mark CPU test, the idle to 28 Celsius with a max of 63 Celsius. Right, so now this is where I push it a bit. I enable PBO and the cpu was drawing 192 watts at the time during each test so for cinebench r23 the idles are 29 celsius so that's definitely a degree up but then that's because the room did start to rise the temperature due to the testing so the idles were obviously 29 celsius with a max of 80 blender cl classroom the idle 29 with a max of 76 celsius now, Blender Pavilion, the idles are 29 with a max of 76. And 3D Mark CPU test, the idles were 29 Celsius with a max of 72 Celsius. Okay then, so what did you think? Now, you've also, you look, you've seen what comes in the box. You've also seen the overall screen and the overall software. And of course, then you've also seen the thermals. Now, yes, it performs well when it comes to under, uh, full load CPU. Yeah, the temperature is 80 Celsius, that was the highest it peaked, but that's not really high for 5900X. During gameplay, you might it might fluctuate between 80 and a bit higher because due to single core, they do generally, when they start going high with the frequency as well as the clocks, it does tend to draw a bit more voltage. So you if you see spikes, don't worry. During gameplay, it depends on what game you're actually playing. Now, the screen, like I say in the video, it can be configured many different ways. And it's actually nice to see that an AIO that is £62 on Amazon at this present moment with a screen that is that customizable. Now, not many brands at this particular moment with screens, they are rather expensive unless, of course, you you do say like deep cool which obviously are a little bit more money when it comes to that but this is uh thermal rights like first like deep dive into the the aios with like the lcd displays as well, and stuff like that now i like the overall software it's very easy to use but the major pain i'd it, i mean it's more like a niggle for me is every time you load the, the actual computer up, the software has to be accepted to load die straight away. The screen won't load, otherwise it'll just show the thermal right logo. That's a bit of, it's not, it's not like a pain or anything, but I'd say it's a bit of a, um, a nuisance because it does it every single time you put the computer on. So after a while it would actually get a bit, it'd get annoying, especially but the fans 
they're really quiet i was really surprised they are starting to go for the more silent optimized fans now these days which i'm all for their previous aios they sounded like jet planes taking off so i'm all for it for them going for silent of course when it comes to the mount then it does support all the latest intel and amd sockets so i don't have to worry about that when it comes to compatibility also they are a lot like noctua in uh, some ways they do like to support old platforms so at least you wouldn't have to worry if you are on a maybe a, th a, f a one or two gens previous to when it comes to intel or amd at least you wouldn't have to worry but what I'd say for £61, I think it's a good value. And of course, if you know anything about the channel when it comes to CPU coolers and, st and stuff like that, their CPU coolers are the best bang for your buck coolers on the market. And I think that when it comes to AIOs, especially with ones with display, I honestly think these guys are going to go up against Thermaltake. Uh, there's obviously Deep Cool, there's there lee and lee there's a seuss there's loads of different brands gigabyte there's loads of different brands and i think them coming in at a good price point i think that is the way to go now as for this week i will be t attending tech max so make sure that you follow me on facebook as well as subscribe to the channel because i will be uploading some things on youtube but primarily on facebook as well as some other places i want you guys to uh, experience that my first ever tech event so yeah don't forget to subscribe to the channel because i've got loads of stuff coming i've got stuff coming from asrock i've got another build to uh, also do as well as i've been in talks with target computers i've been in talks with c sonic i've been in uh, talks with deep cool as well as ngxt so make sure you subscribe and as always i hope you guys have a fantastic Week and weekend ahead of you. This is Richard from Wild Street Tech. Good. Bye.